It's Shake Them Ropes. My name is Chris Novembrino. I am joined by the host with the most, <laughs> Jeff Hawkins. We want to thank our sponsor this week, My Bookie, as we go down the lazy river of wrestling, go through the headlines and news in the wrestling world, and do a preview of the much-awaited show in Saudi Arabia that WWE will be putting on. Here to do that all with me, Jeff Hawkins. Hi, Jeff. You know, Crown Jewel. <laughs> this year has a little bit of added intrigue for a number of reasons. Um, we'll talk about that when we go over this, this, this card. Um, how are you? I'm good. I'm okay. well. I've you been know, we didn't do any pre-gaming really. We just kind of went on the air. Um No, I've been like making music uh this week. I, I sent you the one Ramones yeah. cover I made, but then I did this soundtracking for the show My History Can Beat Up Your Politics. Uh and this piece of music's kind of like you 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 know the movie Aliens or Alien, not Aliens, uh Alien from like 78. Yes, I know the yeah. entire franchise. I am a fan. Yeah, yeah. Like it's kind of that sort of music like sort okay. of real ambient and stuff and it was it was fun to make i had an invitation i'd like to thank the wwe and those involved to go to smackdown this week uh i could not make it due to my, my declining physical body i thought my foot was healed on monday and i went to the gym and i worked out and i've been off my foot ever since i am in extreme pain dizziness has kind of gone away for now uh Thank you for all of you who have checked that out. And I made a decision, Chris November. You know, we will start with this. I am no longer watching NXT 2.0. I cannot. I can't. I just can't. There was a breaking wow, you point. Just, you can't stand Mandy Rose with the black hair. It's it's that bad. She's, she lacks charisma that bad. She even addressed that in her promo this week. She was saying, Jeff Hawkins, uh, regardless <laughs> of what color my hair is, I'm still dynamic. I still am hot fire on the microphone and I bring it in the ring. Here, here is my issue with NXT 2.0. And there was a point about an hour, I'd say an hour, a little bit over an hour in where I'm watching this and I'm going, this just isn't fun. Nobody's having fun on this show. And the reason why is it feels like, and here was the comparison I made. It feels like if you were a fan of a really well done Broadway show, it feels like you've gone to the community theater version of it and you're just watching the same show and, and the people are skilled, but you've already seen it at its best. And what NXT 2.0 has become for me, at least is it has become everything. I don't want it, It's, it's literally main roster with yellow ropes. Now there is no, I mean, Santos and, and swerve were, was a fun match. I hated that that the, the, the contract is a money in the bank because it's like you win it in a tournament and oh you can now cash it in. It NXT. makes not using it for the NXT title even more stupid. Yes, exactly. Why are you not waiting until Breaker and Champa beat the crap out of each other? Go in there, hand it in, and do, you're using it for the secondary title on a show. Is, is this is this is is this grabbing the brass ring? that we hear about is this reaching for the stars and all the no it, and i just yes the line chris the line that threw me and i i understood in the context of the sketch it was doing it was fine <coughs> pardon me wins and losses don't matter it's all about likes and swipes they said this on a national wrestling show chris uh, it, and I'm, it's not really clear to me if that was a heel or a baby face line. No, because it was all about, it was all about, uh, it's weird. It was about him hitting on a girl at the time. And Cameron Grimes was upset about losing his match. And so you don't really know if it's the company talking to you or if it's a character, even if it is the character, no character should be saying this on a professional wrestling show. I don't I know no, it might and that's be his Grayson. That's Grayson Waller or whatever. Yes, that's, it's the, yeah, it's yeah, right. The Aussie the, but, kid. Yeah, the Aussie kid. 
and he's been presented as a baby face, albeit a flaky baby face. Uh, I, I mean, he has I'm really an adrenaline junkie, dude. Right. But and and to me, that comes off as heelish. But like MSK's there. So and, and uh, I, what I'm trying to remember, what are the guys names in MSK? Like, uh, Vamp for a second. I, 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 I mean, they, let's just let's start there. The idea that the tag team champions are so nondescript that because they changed their names from something that was actually decent. You, you can't recall their names, uh, and that is one of the big problems with the okay. new NXT 2.0. Wesley, <laughs> Wesley, and Nash Carter, which are not better than Desmond Xavier and Zachary Wentz. Sorry, it, it Wesley sounds like oh that should be his first name Wesley, right? Wow, I, I think the thing that's the most uninspiring about this new NXT is there are certain people who I I find somewhat intriguing would like to like watch more matches of uh you you circled J C Jane last week and like I think J C Jane's pretty good um but there's no one on this roster you know braun breaker's pretty good yeah but it's, it's, there's not, that, it's no, not that the talent is bad it's that they're presented like dopes I, I mean okay the fact i like the guy who is braun breaker because he's rick steiner's kid and he's yes. got a good intensity I, I like the creed brothers they have at least a normal name um and there are people on this roster who i would like to see work yes but i have no faith that WWE is going to execute or develop out these guys or that anyone's going to be there for any length of time. And I know that when they get brought up to the main roster, it will be the end of things because the main roster is just, it, it, it's, it, it is what it is. It's a mess. And the main roster is a bit of a mess right now. Uh, not that they when can't hasn't put on good it been? shows. True. Not that they can't put on good shows and not that people don't like them. There, uh, there's been a lot of AEW WWE battling on the, in the Twitter verse and on message boards everywhere. I don't uh, pay a lot of attention to it, but I will bring up something. And this is going to be the only news item because not a lot of news this week, to be honest with you, but as he goes, Peter Brady on the butt. Uh, <laughs> so Rampage is on Friday. SmackDown has moved to FS1 due to Besseball, I believe. And so, uh, so uh, they decide that uh, SmackDown is going to be extra long this week. They added a half hour that would go commercial free, adding a what I thought was a very well done Becky Lynch Sasha Banks match. Ending sucked ass. Pardon my French. I don't like to cuss a lot on here, but I knew at the time it's like, we're going to get this great match and they're going to do the dumb ending because they're still pushing this triple threat thing. But it was fine. Bianca interfered a little bit and then uh, Sasha broke Becky's streak. It's a very good match. And so in, in return, AEW goes, okay, you're going to, you're going to dig into our time. Well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to, uh, we're going to do a, uh, buy-in on YouTube and we're going to show you Brian Danielson and Minoru Suzuki. Another very good match. Have no problem with that. I, I'm I'm a little done with the Minoru Suzuki stateside match, but it's fun to watch guys who want to work with him work with him. It was an intense match. I, I mean, especially given the stage that it was put on to go, oh, this is essentially like a YouTube match. Danielson and Suzuki were, you know, really striking each other. It, it was a physical match. To your point, a little paint by numbers, but like Suzuki is a living legend. And to be able to have, you know, living legend matches with Suzuki is cool. And for Suzuki to get up this much for effectively a YouTube match is cool. So I was like, I, I sort of graded on a curve given the weird context of where you're seeing this pretty intense match given the context yeah uh it's as intense as they can make it for the time i i get a little done with the strong style forearm shots over and over again doing no damage and then just going full full speed into the, the end. second time around 
like okay there was there was a point where it's like all right all right all right right you know i i think you need one big section of it one good even a long section of it but multiple section of it i think has diminishing returns that's just my two cents i will ask two questions here number one should this have been on tv as opposed to youtube i know a lot of people were arguing about this this week so i'm going to get into that a little bit Number two, do you think Tony Khan is doing way too much media for his company versus talent? Because when this came up, he, he issued, you know, a proclamation. Hey, you know what? I could go commercial free too. I have more money. So there's a little bit of bickering back and forth in the media from Tony Khan being the representative of AEW versus WWE. Uh, any thoughts on either of those? Uh, I'll do the second item first. I think that there is always a danger of talking too much and what tony khan or really the figurehead of any organization needs to always weigh is how much you you talk uh at any given time and why are you talking to like to what right. end are you talking and right now I think Tony Khan is doing a lot of talking without any necessary like clear goals or like clear benefits. And that suggests to me like the potential to say something stupid on a live microphone that he's then having to clean up versus kind of the more open question of like, all right, why are you going out? Like to what end? Um, sometimes people like to hear themselves talk that can get you in trouble. Uh, and the first question was, Oh, the first question was, do you, do you think it should have been on uh, oh, Rampage or do you yeah. think it was fine on YouTube? I put it on Rampage. Uh, I, I think that given what was on Rampage, I, I look, uh, yeah, I, I, I would. Put I it on am going to disagree with you here and I'll tell okay. you why. I look, I like Minoru Suzuki. I think he's a draw for a certain kind of fan. I don't think he's as big of a draw in terms of. Uh, in terms of the overall AEW fan base, I think they I think there's the a... other guy though. I think yeah. I got to think about Danielson, and, and right now, people really like Adam Page. People like Brian Danielson. They're really, really solidly over baby faces. Like, and I think the more you have Brian Danielson on TV, the better. I think the the more of a chance you have of getting a WWE fan who is maybe feeling a little bit burned out by wwe's product did you see roman reigns's uh comments to the media um no what okay comments? then we don't need to go into it, it was just uh, is it this was a the lot thing of... that dos santos was responding to uh probably he kind of said you know AEW is for a niche audience they have a floor they have a ceiling nobody could believe that a 200 pound cm punk could tap me out you know, I'm a better, you know, a very, you know, it's a very WWE talent type of simping for the company type thing. And I don't mind it. I mean, you got to understand what it is. Too many people take these as quote unquote shooty comments, but it's just, look, you're, you're not going to, you're not going to overall dismiss the talent of the guys in the other company, but you're also not going to praise them overtly either. Uh, if you're working in WWE, they tell you not to. So, you know, it was just one of those things that, came out in the media this week no oh, yeah mm. okay so no news really in terms of major major headlines for me um a lot of the shows were hurt by postseason baseball so i don't think ratings were all that important this week baseball is going to be king in the states especially playoff baseball so let us because we do not have another show until crown jewel is over the always dangerous crown jewel in Saudi Arabia happens on Thursday morning, noon Eastern, nine Pacific, nine matches on the card. Some interesting matches on the card. I think this is an intriguing card, to be honest with you. If they're going, especially because I believe they want to have a WrestleMania style event for crown jewel to impress their major source of income in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, problematic as it is. We'll start off with, uh, <laughs> you can't see what's coming on this one. I don't know what, what, what to tell you. Mansoor versus Mustafa Ali in a singles match. God bless Mansoor. It was a guy on the first crown jewel, plucked from obscurity, could talk a little bit, 
had a little bit of talent, has worked his way up to the main roster. I find this story with Mustafa Ali absolutely enraging at times because it is dumb. <laughs> Why would Mustafa Ali continue to hang out with a guy he doesn't like? They never really explain it, but this is to get, this is, uh, this is the uh, ceremonial. Let's get a couple of uh, our people on the show and let's give the hometown guy a win. I am, uh, I am fine with this. I think Mansoor is going to win. I think he's going to get a nice big pop at the end. And you know what? Considering people losing their hometown so much in WWE, I'm fine with this. I, I think we stop all we wins. <laughs> <laughs> For the heat? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. the crowd yeah, riled yeah. up? Just build them up a little oh bit. Oh, my God. <laughs> Could you imagine? I mean, this is the only dumber idea they ever had was taking out, uh, taking out uh, what's-his-face with the Iranian flag. Oh yeah, uh, Davari. Yeah, Davari. No, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, Davari. God. Yeah, could not uh, believe. Oh it. yeah, no, uh, th- 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 certainly not. Um, I I think that Monsur has looked like an idiot time yes. and again, week yes. in week out. So like he'll win this match, but he looked stupid even when Mustafa Ali was hitting him. And like Monsur was like, <laughs> "Wait, no, we can talk it out." He gets hit in the face again. No, we can still talk. Like, no, you can't stop. Uh, in a Hell in a Cell match, Edge versus Seth Rollins. A very smart usage of the stipulation, in my opinion. I think this match will be a lot of smoke and mirrors to cover up at Edge. Look, Edge is my age. He's not going to be doing the things he was in his 20s. And if he tries, he'll probably end up dead. Um, I think Edge goes over. I think, I think they, they, they do like the classics in Saudi Arabia. They do like the old guys. They like the guys who were big during the Attitude Era. I think Edge goes over on Seth Rollins in the Hell in a Cell. Yeah, I I think it's it's got to be Edge going over Seth Rollins here, uh, and then Seth Rollins will probably change gimmicks again. He was sort of alluding to the last, <laughs> yeah, last time. Uh, I mean, I think it'll be fine. I I don't. I think it'll be fine, but I don't think it'll be great. Yeah, I think it'll be good i don't think we're gonna remember it as one of the greatest hell in the cells ever but i think it'll be they're gonna do the storytelling and we'll see how they do with the storytelling it's not gonna be work rate it's gonna be storytelling here's a couple of interesting things king of the ring tournament finals queen's crown tournament file finals the queen's crown tournament is gonna be Zelina vega versus Shayna baszler or do drop in the King of the Ring tournament, it's going to be Finn Balor versus either Jinder Mahal or Xavier Woods. Chris, I'll give you the option to talk about whichever one you want to talk about first. Uh, let's do the Queen's Cup. Okay. All what right. do you Queen, like? Uh, Queen's Cup options are? Uh, Zelina Vega or the winner of... Um, the winner of Shayna Baszler Bizarre. and Dewdrop. Air, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> say, I'm gonna say Zelina Vega wins, and it becomes kind of like a, a joke on her. Here's the weird thing to me: Shayna Baszler is gay. I know this may be a shock to a lot of people, but she is gay, and she's openly gay, I believe. Dewdrop is bisexual. I don't think that's as well known. I don't think they risk it. I think they have Dewdrop beat uh, beat Shayna Baszler here. They take her to Saudi Arabia, and then it becomes the comedy match between the very big girl and the very small girl. And I think you are correct. I do think they're going to give this to Zelina Vega. Um, that's, yeah. Uh, and, and, and boy, did Dewdrop just really light the world on fire <laughs> with their performance on Raw this week. Yeah, yeah, that uh, that Eva Marie story fizzled out, and, and now they don't know what to do with her, it seems, I think. Yeah, uh, it, the character is just so strange. I, I thought Natty, for her part, actually worked the most interesting match she's probably worked in I three thought years. for sure Natty was winning this damn thing. I did too. When that happened, and she can be the queen of hearts, and then... Yeah, and then but and she's a known commodity over in Saudi Arabia because she's been over there for a show. I believe she and 
I want to say she and Bailey wrestled a match in shirts and gear. Uh, right, right. No, uh, or no that, Sasha. Sa- one, of the no. Th- one of the things I was thinking about is her outfit has always been the most easily adapted to the Saudi Arabian yes. dress standards. Yes, we're going to get we're going to get long shirts and we're going to get uh, no skin. As you might recall, there was a bit of a blow up on the first Crown Jewel, I believe, with the commercial with Sasha Banks and Carmella wearing rather skimpy outfits and. Uh, and, uh, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia did not appreciate that. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to be getting that. And okay. King of the ring, Finn Balor versus Jinder Mahal or Xavier Woods. I think it's <laughs> Xavier Woods versus Jinder Mahal. Yes. Yeah. And I think Woods wins. I disagree. And I hate it because I think, I think Xavier Woods would be a very good, likable King of the ring. I think we're getting Finn Balor versus Jinder Mahal. I think we're going to get some sort of story about the quote unquote demon King coming back into Finn Balor, maybe making him fail, maybe making him win. Since we're having Zelina being the, the heel queen to be for comedy sake, I say Finn Balor wins King of the ring. I do. I'd, I'd love to see Xavier win this match on Monday and for him and Finn to have a very good match and for Xavier to get, cause it's his dream to be King of the ring. But I think they use that for heat on gender. And then eventually they have Finn Balor win. And then he gets the demon back somehow. I don't know. You know, okay. If Balor wins, it might actually do the thing that the King of the ring seldom does. Like Balor's an actually good candidate for King of the Ring to re-energize his character. I and I think Yeah, I, you it. know what? If this were about being the best wrestler, sure. But no, it's about wearing a crown and the cape and being a bit of a goofball. Yeah, but he won't have to wear the crown all the time. And True. like, I, I don't think I don't I think having this be associated with the demon character sort of inoculates Balor from having to wear the king crown all the time. Any no holds barred match Goldberg versus Bobby Lashley. This this could uh, this could devolve quick, but uh, I think there's again smoke and mirrors. We're gonna we're gonna get the spot of the spear through, you know that one place in the uh, <laughs> in the in the arena where 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 the thing collapses when you do it. I think that's gonna happen. You're gonna get a few table spots here and there, but I think uh, see Bobby Lashley doesn't have to win this match because it's not for a title. I would not be surprised if Goldberg goes over Bobby Lashley here. Yeah, I, I, again, this is Saudi Arabia. This is a feel-good show. This is uh, we're bringing in over the old legends, so you can see the old legends win a match sort of show. Uh, I think the real question is: Does Goldberg go for the jackhammer? And on a scale of one to ten, how bowling shoes ugly will it be? <laughs> Yep. Uh, now we get into the title matches. Singles match for the WWE Championship. Big E taking on Drew McIntyre before Drew packs his bags and goes to SmackDown. I don't think we'll be trading talent for the big belt, so I see Big E winning this after a hard-fought contest. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the match. I actually think that Drew McIntyre and Big E have good uh opposing dynamics with one another and i would like to see them in a different setting where they could tell a different story because i think it'd be really fun like they clearly have charisma when interacting with each other yeah uh and that's and that's and that's fresh for drew because i hate his charisma i do i hate this sword gimmick it's stupid no for sure for sure uh he can be good though he he can be good and you know he is a good wrestler I like Drew McIntyre, but uh, I, I thought the Mega Powers unite and Mega Powers explode angle in one night sort of is emblematic of broader WWE storytelling. Like this could be a more fun angle, but I think this will be a pretty fun match. I think this will be pretty intense. It's going to be part of the Lazy River originally, but let's give a shout out to that WWE SmackDown tag title match that uh, the. Uh, the the, uh, the the street profits and the Usos had. I thought that was very very good. Uh, they are not on this card. I think that was moved from the card on onto the SmackDown show. I, I thought that was very very good. Um, I like I like that uh, I like that Montez Ford is kind of doing the uh, AR Fox jump over the uh, turn turnbuckle and the post. It's a little dicey, 
uh, type of spot. It's always impressive. And uh, he's an impressive dude. I like him a lot. Uh, okay, for a tag team match, uh, for the WWE Raw Tag Team Titles, RK Bro, can they coexist? <laughs> a story that has not, uh, not evolved one second from the moment they started telling it, going up against AJ Styles and Omos, another duo that has not evolved since they got put together. I think, uh, I think AJ Styles and Omos win the titles back, and then RK Bro probably probably RKO's riddle and gets the crowd hyped. Oh, wow. Um, what do you think? I don't know, man. I, I think that the RK bro merchandise, like seeing those numbers on how well that stuff is selling. Okay. It, you can I, change my mind on this. Trust yeah. Me. I, I don't, I don't think they're done with that yet. I think RK bro maybe finds a way to retain. Maybe it's like not like a clean finish one way or another, but I think that RK bro still the title have still has the titles at the end of the match. Oh, you've, you've, you've convinced me. I, th- I think they're going to retain. I think they're too fan friendly to do it. Although God help us. If, if brittle makes a pot joke in Saudi Arabia, <laughs> put a lock on that guy's mouth the entire time he's over there. Uh, in a, a triple threat match for the WWE SmackDown Women's Championship, which should be pretty good. Uh, it's gonna be two people wrestling and one taking a nap. We know the we know the the style, but Becky Lynch defending against both Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks. Becky and Sasha just have amaze balls chemistry always. Next next to Sasha and Bailey, they are the second pairing that just they kill it every time they're together, and I love them. I think Bianca's. Here for the ride, I think, uh, let's see, Bianca is going to Raw. I think Becky is also going to Raw. I don't know if they do the handoff of the belts because who is the Raw women's champion? Is it still Charlotte? Yeah, Charlotte's the champion. They might do the belt switch. They might do the belt switch on the way through, much like the tag team tiles, or Bianca might win on Monday. So I am going to go with this. I think Bianca Belair wins the women's raw women's title on Monday gets entered into this triple threat and Sasha pins her for the SmackDown women's title. Although wait a second, she just won on the go home. So, Oh man, that's going to suck. Uh, no, no change. No change on either Becky and Becky and Charlotte switch belts as they go to different brands. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, I increasingly have a hard time seeing Bianca winning the title back here, which is really the one thing that Bianca so desperately needs, especially as the I beat Bianca Belair in 26 seconds has been a talking <laughs> point and plot point throughout the entirety of this feud here. But I don't see that happening. What what would actually be great is if Bianca somehow managed to win this triple threat in 26 seconds. Um but they, they and then switches it. off the belt when Charlotte comes to SmackDown and she goes to Raw. I guess so. I, I mean, okay, like, no, I can I can talk myself into that because maybe Charlotte wins against Bianca by cheating, and then maybe well, no, they're never going to let her win in twenty six seconds. There's no, <laughs> no, no, no. That that was a one way door, and yes. Bianca and Bianca went through that door again. Other people are not going through that door, uh. It, so. Yeah, I think I think Becky retains. Okay, I can I can deal with that too. I think it's gonna. I think this match may steal the show. I do. I I I like the match a lot. Then in the main event for singles match for the WWE Universal Championship, Roman Reigns with Paul Heyman versus Brock Lesnar. The end of SmackDown was absolutely. I I liked it a lot with Brock. I think basically I think Brock's lying this whole time and basically saying, Oh yeah. I looked over this contract earlier with my advocate, Paul Heyman and kind of leaving it there. I think Heyman interferes in a way to make it seem like, uh, make it seem like he's helping Brock, but it's just mixed communication. I think Roman eventually pulls this out. I think Roman wins the match, but there's still the, there's still the, it will he or won't he type of story with Paul Heyman. I, I, I do think Paul is with Roman here i don't think he's going to turn but i think they're going to try and make you think he will 
I don't know. Oh, uh-huh. okay. Talk to me. I think I think Paul is with with Brock. Okay. Yeah. I I, I don't like it's it the whole it's hard to like make all of Heyman's actions over recent weeks really make sense if he's actually loyal to Roman Reigns. Well, he's never done anything with with him. It's just it's just Brock trolling and making his life hell. Yeah. Yeah, but then I I, I just don't see Brock being back. Well, what is Brock's contract? Uh <laughs> special. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, he can sure. go he can go wherever he wants whenever he wants pretty much. <laughs> No, I, I mean, like, how, do we have any idea of how many dates they're planning on using him for? Uh, I, I could get that information, but I'm not ready for it at post time right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so taking a look at the odds right now on yeah. mybookie.ag, Roman Reigns okay. is minus 200, Brock Lesnar plus 150, Becky Lynch minus 200, Bianca Belair plus 185, Sasha Banks plus 250. Uh, Big E minus 550, Drew McIntyre plus 325, Edge minus 350, Seth Rollins plus 225, Goldberg, big favorite, minus 300, Bobby Lashley plus 200, Mansoor minus 1200, Mustafa Ali plus 550. I like those odds. <laughs> and RK Bro minus 275 plus 185 for AJ Styles and Omos. Chris, tell us about my bookie. Oh, man, my bookie. Uh, In addition to being the place where you can go and place your bets for Crown Jewel, which is in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, my bookie has over $500,000 in contest prize money that's up for grabs. The NFL is back in action, and so is winning season at my bookie. Head to mybookie.ag to choose from a variety of boosts and free bets to get in on the fan favorite $100,000 super contest, which only costs $10 to enter. Pick five games against the spread each week. Each win earns you a point, and each point gets you closer to the grand prize. In order to get you started, make your first deposit at mybookie.ag and use the promo code ROPES. Ropes. <laughs> it's still not there. <laughs> to no, insert- we're so- <laughs> It's still you not remember from last week, really? A a lot of things happen over seven days. I have a life, it's full. It's It's popular. I have friends, I I have students, I make music. Finish, I I care. Uh, I have cats to instantly receive double your double. I'm trying to finish the read. Thank you. To instantly receive double your deposit. That's double your money to double your winnings with your first ever deposit using the promo code ropes. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. We thank my bookie for their sponsorship. And that will be the last read you ever did. No, I. Uh- <laughs> The lazy river of wrestling criticism <laughs> is open. I am going to start this week because I don't usually do this. I don't usually, this isn't calling out an opinion piece, but I want to talk about it a little bit because it's it's in my wheelhouse a little bit. It's from a site called countoutpod.com. I believe they are a wrestling podcast, young kids just doing their thing, proud of them. But there's an article on there, how the IATC strike will affect U.S. TV, U.S. wrestling television. And uh, I will I will give you the opening stanza on October 13, 2021. The International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees, which is what IATC stands for. That's so they will begin a nationwide strike on October 18th if contract if contract deal is not reached. Got to proofread there a little bit. A strike was authorized by the union members last week during a voting process. Voter turnout was 90%, and of that, 98.6 voted yes to strike authorization. Now, here's what IATSE does. IATSE covers, I mean, the, the, there are various unions within IATSE. You know, I, you know animators have a union, uh, grips, electricians, basically any kind of crew you have on a set is going to be covered, at least at a big studio, by an IATSE union. 
He is wrong, though. It is not going to his his, his premise is that uh, all all the tradesmen who work on WWE and AEW are going to uh, are going to follow the strike, and he himself admits his bias within within the editorial. He is trying to get into the accountants' union and doing his hours to get in there. I am a member of the Screen Actors Guild. I'm a former member of the Writers Guild of America. I probably will never be a member of that again because the dues at this point would just be far too expensive. But WWE has their own technicians. They have their own crew. The only time they would run afoul of IATSE is if they were going to an arena because arenas make deals with the guys who do the grunt work. We call it load in and load out. Those are stage hands. Those are like... Uh, well, roadies for, for rock bands and stuff like that. Although most rock bands have their own roadies. If you go to a union arena with a contract, the guys who actually do the loading and unloading, or they watch you do the loading and unloading, as it were, are, are usually IOTC employees. WWE's technicians, their cameramen, their lighting grid guys, all those other things, they are recruited through wwe and i believe they're recruited through a company called either upstage or upstaging which is a non-union house that will train you how to do these types of things and his 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 uh hypothesis is is that is is a little wrong as well because he goes well you know guys who are non-union are young guys like me that is not true you can, uh, there are a lot of guys out here who either can't get into the union because they do the wrong kind of work or they don't want to be part of the union because they, they like kind of the outlaw nature of it. The, the guys who, the things about performers unions and skill unions in the motion picture industry, you have to realize, and a lot of people don't, is it's not like regular unions. Their, their power is not in getting more people to join their union. Their power is in exclusivity and keeping people out of joining the union. And so you only have a select number of people, depending on seniority, blah, 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 to, to, to move from. So if they shut down, you're kind of scrambling for people to use. Um, but I talked to a couple of people in WWE about this just to confirm you know, my suspicions. And they said, yeah, we're not gonna miss a beat because of the way we do business. And that's to be expected. AEW might be a problem, uh, I don't know, but most of those people are ex WWE guys. They may have their own house too. I believe Kevin Sullivan, not the taskmaster, but uh, the Kevin Sullivan who was involved in production with WWE's head of AEW's rig crew and stuff like that. I believe he basically hired a bunch of his old guys. Now, there is one possible issue here, and it's an interesting one. There are some members of both rosters who are members of the Screen Actors Guild. The Screen Actors Guild is going to honor the strike and they will not cross picket lines now depending on how both wrestling companies are uh how, how do i put categorize this this might be interesting as to whether or not they are scabbing but i know like sasha banks definitely has a sag card from her work on the mandalorian uh roman reigns has a sag card from being on the fast and furious movies i believe or he's at least sag eligible uh, John Morrison has a SAG card. The Miz has a SAG card, I believe. I believe Becky Lynch as well from being in, in, in movies. I don't think those were non-union. I think those were SAG productions. Over in AEW, I think uh, Chris Jericho probably definitely has, has one, I believe. I'm trying to think of who else might have. Miro might have one. Um, I'm not sure the Bucks or Omega or Hangman do i don't think big Adam show probably would. does big show yes big show is a good call on that one um cm punk probably does from his work on heels for a, a few different episodes or he is at least sag eligible that might be interesting that might be intriguing as to how the unions feel about them quote-unquote scabbing because wrestling's not exactly classified like normal television so it, it, that might be that might be a story to watch later I, I have spoken enough chris your thoughts i mean that would be interesting what would be the implications then for considering wrestlers stunt performers well that's i mean i talked about that before when when they were talking about going into sag and trying to get 
the wrestlers done for SAG. They'd actually have to take two different paychecks. They'd get one as a performer and one as a stunt performer, unless they made a specific classification for professional wrestlers. And, and, and that would take, that would take certain regulation and things like that. But yeah, if, if you're a, if you're a wrestler who is on the show talking and then also wrestling, you would probably draw two paychecks for that night as a stunt performer. Cause stunt performers are also IATSE in, in terms of that. Um, I think the only one who might have their stunt card for that is Morrison. Cause I know Morrison started out trying to get into the stunt game. Paul London, you might remember, also does stunts out here. So, <laughs> although he's not on television, so so I don't think that would count. But uh, I think that would be. I think that's going to be an interesting thing. I don't think anybody's going to u- lose their union membership over it. But if Iasi decides to go after these quote unquote non union shows type of thing, it's going to be interesting to see who crosses the picket line and who doesn't. Yeah. I, I, I we'll just have to see what happens. I I just I tend to think when I was reading the story that you I knew you were going to have better insight on the actual actors union stuff uh being out in California and having been in that world. But I just whenever I I was reading the story it just seemed like there is what could happen what the author perhaps wants to happen and what is the most likely outcome and yeah this is mostly i think the actor what or not the actor but what what he wants to happen and i don't think it's going to that was the vibe i was getting Uh, i i think sometimes we want something to happen and that can color our analysis of what is the most likely thing to happen and he's still he's still i mean i don't think he i mean he he works he works in atlanta it appears because i think that's where all the cw shows do a lot of their production right now so he may not know a lot about how the unions all work necessarily out there. I mean, he's still trying to get his hours to, to join the accounting union. He's not union yet. He, he even says in the article, he will be eventually. So it's just, and I, see, I didn't want to drag him on Twitter and I, Oh, you don't know anything, blah, 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 blah. But uh, I, I just think he's, I think he's mistaken about a lot of this. I don't know how AEW handles their shop, but WWE is not going to miss a beat. Yeah, I, I think if anyone was going to be the victim here, it would be AEW, and even then, I think it would be, it would it would be less of a hiccup than I think people realize. I, I mean, they, un, unless for some reason it kept like CM Punk off of TV, right? And that's a possibility. I mean, they may just have to explain it with an injury or something. Yeah, your turn. Um, I, have, have we talked about Bianca Belair really getting buried during the course of this feud here? I, we have I, said I that I, she is, she is she is drowning because she is getting chewed up by performers who are far more charismatic and far more powerful in terms of how they are presented. Yeah, and, and I just every the tag match here on Raw, I thought that didn't help her at all. Like yeah. n- n- every single time. She is the third or fourth most relevant person in these encounters. And uh, it, she's not getting elevated up to horsewoman level here. She is getting sort of highlighted as not being up to horsewoman level. Yes, here. I, I think that's I think that's exactly right. Look, I, I love me the horsewomen. I do. They are fantastic wrestlers, but they are all of them. Are on, a, are on another level that Bianca has not been raised to. And the problem here is that she wasn't built up enough after winning at WrestleMania to not drown whenever you have... Look, the problem with Becky and Sasha in a promo battle with, with Bianca is that Becky's going to be sarcastic as hell. She's not, a, she's not doing a heel thing. She's doing, she's doing a dismissive Stone Cold type thing where it's like she's calling everybody a dope. And, like, and, and Sasha is just, I mean, Sasha's otherworldly. <laughs> Her promos aren't good, per se. <coughs> Pardon me. But she has a she has great presence. look. Yeah, she, she has, has a presence great, and a she look. has presence, and, and she commands her entrance every single time. And and the big problem here for Bianca this whole time is she's been the 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 baby face of sorts here. Becky was supposed to be a heel. Uh, but the crowd effectively turned her baby face. 
Sasha is not real is not being a baby face, but she's being the heel character that makes her a baby face like that. She's done time and again, that's resulted in her being a baby face. And so Bianca and Bianca is doing this weird. She's being coached to give attitude, which makes her a little bit unlikable at the same, uh, uh-uh, that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's like McMahon would, it's like McMahon went up to her and did a bad racial impression of what he thinks a black wrestler is and goes, okay, you do that now, Bianca. Have you ever seen the thing where, where they do the snapping? I we want you to do some sass. of the snapping. Yeah. yeah. Girl, you would. <laughs> <laughs> I could see Vince doing that kind of thing and coaching her about that. I, 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 I actually here on the notepad, I have several lines that you could try out. See if any of these work in your promos. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she's, she's but she's getting eaten alive here, and it's 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 uh, it's it sucks to see. Like, yeah. like yeah, it really does. Uh, another, and, and then you add Charlotte in the mix. It was just I'm the queen. I'm the best. Look how many titles I got. She never shows ass on her promos nope. or in the ring. So you have another person who's just gonna overpower Bianca. Yeah, uh, who is Bianca supposed to get over on here? Yeah, I, I mean, another way, sort of, to like reverse engineer the quandary is to just think, okay, start from the idea of we want to make Bianca look better. Is she going to outclass Charlotte? Is she going to outclass Sasha? Or is she going to outclass Becky? Becky, who's already beat her in twenty six seconds, and Becky is allowed to and encouraged to bring that up on promos. <laughs> And yeah, screw- it doesn't help if you're, hey, I beat you in 26 seconds. Hey, I beat you in 26 seconds. Hey, I beat you in 26 seconds. Unless Bianca's going to beat her in like 25 seconds. Yeah, or that like every time she says that, that actually sends Bianca into a fit of rage where like Bianca goes into an overdrive mode yes. or something. Yeah, like this is a new point of emphasis that like really makes her angry. Um, it, it has, there's been no payoff for the 26 seconds. Uh, it, it, it's just really frustrating because... I, you were really up on Bianca Belair. Took me a while to warm up to her. I saw it. I thought she needed more time in NXT. I thought she really needed like a, a, a stronger run. She needs character work. She yes. is a phenomenal athlete. She yes. is, she is possibly the most phenomenal athlete they have had on this roster in terms of females ever. And that's a strong take for me, but I, I believe in that. I mean, if you watch that first May Young classic match she ever had, I mean, she is just, she's just pulling things out that you're just like, how, you know, they got something here and they knew they had something here. And then they just, they killed her on the character work in NXT a bit. And then they brought her up and they never really did anything. And they put her on the shelf for a couple months and they brought her back out and they gave her the big win, but they really haven't. I didn't think she got enough time in NXT to have like the good long form NXT matches to really learn how to wrestle. Like, like at no point during this career here, has she really learned how to wrestle a long form match? She's a 15 minute match. She no, has not she, had a because uh, uh, you don't learn that on the main roster. On the right. main roster, you get tasked with doing these weird little five to seven minute matches where you can't learn anything because you can't really try anything because you do your five to seven minute match. It's the same five to seven minute match you will do the entirety of your career with some modest tweaks <laughs> as you are tweaking, you know. Play the out. hits, damn it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, like the the Bret Hart five moves of doom sort mm-hmm. of match. Yeah. No. Um, and Bianca, because of that, has really had no chance to grow. And, and I don't, it, it, it's just, this is the problem with the main roster. It, it provides absolutely no opportunity to do so. I will go next. I really liked on Dynamite. The way that they laid out that show with the sandwiching of the match with Aleister Black and Dante Martin being about leg locks. And then Bobby Fish and Brian Danielson ending ending with leg lock battle. I thought that was very mid south circa eighty four, maybe eighty three type of thing where they'd have a show about a move, and everything would like the example I I, I give is there was a show, I believe eighty three might have been eighty two but eighty three. Um, where the whole show revolved around Ted DiBiase having found a reversal for the figure four leg lock. And so the first match had a figure four leg lock and the second match had a figure four leg lock in there as a transition move. But then we finally get to DiBiase's match and we get the figure four and then he flips it over 
and puts the pressure on the other leg. And even though that doesn't work in real life, quote unquote, it, it, that this is how that story was created. And it was, it was kind of cool to see Alistair and Dante for all its issues. And there were a few issues I had with, with that match uh, being about leg locks and stuff. And then having Danielson and fish and fish, fish having the heel hook, Danielson grabbing his leg and then getting fish to tap out. I, I liked, I liked the bookends on that. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that. Uh, I it, since you brought both those matches, uh, I I enjoyed Bobby Fish and Brian Danielson. Um, I, I mean, I did. You know, they kept on commentary spotlighting that these guys had just worked really hard the night prior, mm-hmm. and the more you bring it up, the more it sort of shows in the work. Like they had a good match, but like you you know that they could have done more. Uh, and as for Alistair Black and Dante Martin, um, I, I, what I thought was interesting here was the sort of, sort of slow turn of Alistair Black, where Alistair Black gave Dante Martin the recognition at the end of the match here. It was interesting, like juxtapose that to the Nightmare Family promo. The, the problem I have is, is I don't mind the, the, the tap of respect there but you got the other story with Leo rush going. And I think it's trying to put too many cooks into this entire, you know, the, the temptation of Dante Martin type of story. I, I, uh, you know, Leo, I, I like that. Alistair black is the good guy. Like the, the angel yeah. on your shoulders, Alistair black, the devil is Leo rush. Maybe they're turning him. Maybe. I I, no, I, I think, I, no, I, I think they are. I, I, in a way, it, I mean, they're just. But then, why do you do the why do you do the Cody up. thing then? That's the thing, because Cody, they're they're doing the Rocky Three story with Cody. Where it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays back when they get it in front of a crowd, because I think it's one thing to do these vignettes, and they could tell whatever story they like with vignettes. But every time Cody comes back in front of a crowd, he gets booed out of the house. By the way, legitimate couple moments of ptsd for me uh during that arn promo because he mentions uh the football exercise bull in the ring bull in the ring is how i got knocked out at uva (laughs) uh bull in the ring if if those of you never played any level of organized football is all the players stand in a circle and they're doing kind of the jogging thing. They're not, they're doing kind of a light jog, keep it on their feet and stuff like that, that you see in like football drills and stuff like that. And one guy goes in the center and the coach calls out one or two numbers. And those, those two numbers are to rush at the player as fast as they can and to hit them. And the whole point is that the player in the center is supposed to be fast enough to be able to see the player coming and brace themselves for an impact so they don't get hurt as much. And this did not happen when I was doing Bull of the Ring on a college level. Uh, uh, All-American by the name of Chris Slade and another player high-load me. And uh, I was out for a, for a good, good while. Um, <laughs> in the concussion era, they don't do this as much in, in the thing. But, of course, Arn being a boomer type, would know what bull in the ring was it is a uh it's a ridiculous exercise that gets way too many players hurt uh so i appreciate that for what it was but yes they are doing the clubber lang story from rocky here where i think they're expecting cody to get cheered and i'm not so sure he is i i think that Again, if if they want him to get cheered, little moments like Aleister Black showing a sign of respect to Dante Martin after a hard-fought match instead of picking him up and knocking him out again, it, 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 these are the like little details that would really matter to getting Cody over. I'm I'm not, I have no idea what the plan with Cody is at this point. I, I, I I'm I understand the story. I I think. I just don't, I, I have a hard time seeing it getting received the way they think it's going to get received in front of a live audience, but, but we'll see what happens. I suppose your turn on the river. Um, my turn on the river. 
Oh man, I just saw a happy Corbin and Madcap Moss. <laughs> like Madcap Moss is horrible. <laughs> like yes. this is like this is like one of the all time this isn't even fun like Slapjack. This is just a horrible character. I I you know what my other note was gonna be about another character that I go the materials the character the acting's terrible, but the the, the <laughs> material would be good on another this Andre Chase. I I appreciate the effort. Trust me, he is bad for a professional wrestling actor. I, he just is not getting the uh, the right emphasis on the right syllable uh, on a lot of words that he's doing. Yeah, and, and I think that this thing where he loses it on the student would be a lot better if, I mean, he was actually getting physical with them. Yes. When he just yells at them and kicks them out of the classroom, it makes him seem like a twerp. And... <laughs> I, yeah, I I don't know. Like, uh, I I see something with the guy who's doing Andre Chase. Yes, he's perfectly but, fine, but he's just not. He's not. These are pre-taped. You don't have to do them live. Give him another take to try and get it right. Okay, I'll go. I'll do one more bonus round. Uh, Last Legend is terrible. Oh, I, God. I Last Legend is it, the, these bits are just. Like, have you seen the Wendy Williams show? Yes, but like they're edited so quickly. It's exactly that like, it. That she has absolutely like it, it sounds like she has ADD. So tell you about Hit Row. Wow. All right. Now up next we have Braun Breaker. He's crazy. And then we have that guy, Tony Marmaluke. And he wants to be on the show, but I said he can't be on the show. See you We're next week. We are getting a love story between Lash Legend and Tony D'Angelo, aren't we? <sighs> Well, no, because Tony D'Angelo like kidnapped her producer. Kidnapped her producer, but did it because he wanted to be on the show. Yeah, we're but we're getting the we're getting the Italian stereotype and 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 the yes, we the, the this is pure main roster type stuff. I think maybe maybe. And I <laughs> I I liked the I liked the trunk gimmick. I found it funny. I did. I, I I don't know. D'Angelo is 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 growing on me a bit. Oh, is he? A little, not much, but a little. But I won't be watching this week to week. I'll be reviewing it after people watch it and tell me what to watch on it. Um, I I enjoy Kyle O'Reilly and Von Wagner becoming better <laughs> better friends. <laughs> it's <laughs> Kyle. I know you've been through a the lot. Mismatched cops me. who aren't really connecting. It's so great. Yeah, you, you could trust me. I don't know if I could trust you. You can. Uh, my last thing that I had on my list of things to talk about, I loved the FTR thing. I thought they were going to be the team that, that he brought out under masks. When they said two mask guys, I go, it's going to be FTR. Uh, because that's that's the uh, November match. Uh, <laughs> and I liked CM Punk going, no, that's FTR. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it was just directed right there, and Tony wasn't in on the joke it appeared. Uh, Vampire will well, I cough. Um, I found myself baffled yet again by Joe Gacy. They really like this Joe Gacy character, and uh, there is n not a whole lot to this. The Joe petting Gacy on the face as a cat owner didn't get you. No, Jeff. No, Jeff. <laughs> it's not. It's not the same thing. It's what you, different. What are you thinking of uh, Parker Boudreaux's new look? Because that's who. Uh... This Harlan guy is. Oh, okay, okay. Um, it's it's a new look. Uh, I I think that this is like a real dead end for Joe Gacy uh, as a character. I think he's a decent enough wrestler. Gacy, yeah, Gacy's yeah. a decent enough wrestler. I I just think that like there's the promos are going to be the same every week. Yes. And because like they don't really have anything to go with this other than. Millennials say things like snowflake and yes. safe space. That's it. It's and, gonna and, be the and, buzzword and, promos. Every it's week. been a it's been a cul-de-sac. Mm -hmm. That that was the thing I nailed on this the first week. It's not like, oh, this offends my sensibilities. What if what it offends is I know that you can't actually write this character any deeper than one week's worth of promos. Yeah. And it's gonna be the same thing week after week. Yep. Yeah, well, let's close up the lazy river. We'll end it there. Um, oh, 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 I, I, oh well, no. Go for it. Um, Go for it. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Julius Creed continues to be really entertaining. I think that. <laughs> look, I just think Is that the shorter of the creeds. 
He's yeah, he's uh, yes. the skinnier of the creeds. Oh no, 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 no. You like you like the big brother then. Yes, the big brother. Okay, who's I a like loud the mouth. little brother a lot. The 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 big the big refrigerator. The wider the wider yeah, yeah. The, the ones who the one who talks a lot. I like him quite a bit. Uh, no, the big one, uh, the tall one talks a bunch. The Julius, that's Julius is like the trash talker. No, 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 no. Brutus is the, is the trash no, talker. No, no, no. Julius is. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Malcolm, <laughs> Malcolm Bivens is the trash talker. No, no, like, like Brutus talks more trash now, but like Julius has always been like the let's go. I love this. I was, I'm ready. Like, like he's See, the like, matches I've seen. It's been mostly, mostly Brutus doing it, And then Julius, I think has, has opened up a bit. Cause he was the guy that, that on at least the two or five match I saw, it was, it was Julius. who was doing most of the, the trash talking. Yeah. Or well, anyways, whatever. you're saying Brutus. Yeah. Well, whatever. Uh, anyways, they, they killed the Iki Manjiro, which was, is a damn shame because he's great. Everyone loves Iki Manjiro. I do not. I'm tired of this guy. Uh, I he's, am. he's got a great jacket. He's he, oh, fun. That's all he has is a jacket. He's fun. He likes to have fun. Um, Indy Hartwell. Indy Hartwell uh, and Persia Parada uh, are a meaningless addition to this match here. <laughs> you don't Women's win. division is uh, is lacking, but it's well, here's a question: Would you rather have this triple threat match or or or, or ten more minutes of Kira Hogan and and Penelope Ford? Oof! Because there was a lot of Twitter stop watching on the on the Queen of the queen of the canvas tournament or whatever they're called queen's crown tournament yeah oh it's two and a half minutes it's one and a half minutes and then i present to you i present to you penelope ford and kira hogan who got lost at least twice during that match now for me the cure is go back to the basics kick stomp punch type of stuff as opposed to choreography and and showing everybody your athleticism and stuff but it appears that this is what aew wants out of their women's division which I don't think other than uh, the top couple players is all that good. Yeah. I mean, I think the problem with the choreography style matches is it just requires both performers to be at like a super high level. And when they're not at a super high level, it gets exposed in very substantial ways. Right. And especially as you are learning that style, uh, you know, it, you need someone in there to really be the veteran hand to call the whole thing out. Um, I, I yeah, I, I would love to see. Look, I really like Saray. Like, I, I think Saray is yes. a really, really talented wrestler. And she's lost over on 205 yeah, Live now. Totally lost. Um, but I, you know, I, I think there are other styles of matches for the women to be working than super heavy choreography styles. Uh, Agreed. And, and I yeah. think, I think a triple threat's going to be way too much spot. It's going to be here. Here's the part where Io Shirai does a moonsault onto the other five or yeah, five women. Well, and I think it's sort of, I think it's unnecessary, right? Like I don't think India Hartwell and Persia Parada are really at the level of where you've elevated toxic attraction. And this should really be a showcase match for toxic attraction, whether or not they win the titles. Okay. Um, this should be, this should be them and Zoe Stark and Io Shirai, like, you know, with, with that do on the other side of the ring and, and we know that jc jane and is a good hand and Gigi dolan hasn't shown us like that she's you know iffy um i i think like that could have been a perfectly fine tag match in and of itself yeah i i, I too many I, cooks I, I haven't seen anything out of persia parada that makes me want to see more persia parada i'll put it that way right i have nothing else for the for the lazy river do you um uh i'm just seeing oh i liked cm punk and uh matt Seidel. i thought yeah. that was pretty yeah it was pretty fun and uh yeah that's that's all that's all i got i think that's gonna that's gonna wrap it up for this edition of shake them ropes cool you can follow me at crap game 13 you can follow chris at dwatg you can follow the show at shake them ropes all one word if you want to see us Give dirty looks to one another. You can watch the show at youtube.com slash voices of wrestling. We are part of the voices of wrestling network, the flagship music of the mat with our boy, Andrew rich, who always pops me with some sort of cultural reference during the week, five-star match game, open the voice gate, whatever your predilection towards wrestling, even if it's old TNA, which our boy Garrett kidney is, is doing a retrospective on. 
We have it for you at Voices of Wrestling. Look for it on your podcast providers, Google Play, Downcast, Apple Podcasts. We'd appreciate a five-star review if you haven't given us one, and I haven't plugged for one in a long time, so I'll take it. Chris also does a show called Don't Worry About the Government. It's over on Patreon. He will tell you about that now. Yeah, you can go and check out Don't Worry About the Government over at patreon.com slash DWATG. I am going to be doing an episode here tomorrow with the mighty Bruce Carlson from My History Can Beat Up Your Politics. We will be talking about the last president's administration, this president's administration, the future, the past, the present, <laughs> all of these things. I, yeah, the, bi the big stuff. I, I, it's, it's a topics show. Don't worry about the government is a show on topics and you can hear us discuss that over at patreon.com slash DWATG on iTunes, Stitcher and Spotify. We'll see you next week.